This is the part two of I'm automating a business life series where I'm automating a six-figure wholesaling business of my friend Stephen Clark. Before you watch this video, make sure you watch the first part where we had an AI strategy meeting and where we identified the two most promising opportunities to start from. In this video, we're going to go over the second stage, which is build an MVP. In this stage, we also have five steps in the process, starting with the first one, the explore stage. So in the explore stage, we need to review the two opportunities that we identified, which were the lead qualification process and the Google form process, and then research the best possible implementation details. Since I recorded the first part, we actually also had a meeting with the team where I asked them to walk me through this whole process live. You don't always have to do that. If you want, you can always just ask them to record a Loom video if some details are still unclear to you. And additionally, of course, I asked for all of the permissions to these systems. So one more thing that came up actually while we were doing the walkthrough is that sometimes the quote generation process is also quite time consuming. And so in this video, we're going to focus on these two. Number one, we're going to focus on the form fill out process. And number two, we're going to focus on the quotation process and the offer confirmation. So let's get started. Basically, what I like to do on the first explore stage is I like to go to ChatGPT and search for some APIs that I can use for this agent. So the transcription part itself is pretty simple. We can just use Whisper for that, obviously. But the second part with finding out how much the home is worth is a bit more complex. And this will require either web access or access to other real estate APIs that can give us prices for similar homes in the area. So let me ask ChatGPT if there are any APIs like this. Make sure you enable web search and now let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so as you can see, it searched quite a few sources and then came up with the best APIs for given areas. Also, it told me that Zillow API is not available and that public API was closed, which is also quite useful because initially I was planning to use Zillow. So we're going to be primarily targeting homes in the US. So here we have four different options. Now let me explore each of these options and then select the best one. So from all of the options that ChatGPT came up with, I think RentCast seems like the most suitable one because they have a reasonable pricing where I can even pay for request. It seems like they have a very nice documentation for their API, while all the other websites seem to be either way too complicated, outdated, or seem to have extremely high pricings. So I'm going to go with RentCast for this specific agent. And the next step is to find the necessary endpoints that our agent is going to need. And the endpoint that we're going to need, I think, is the value estimate endpoint, which returns a property value and comparable properties. So yeah, this information is exactly what our agent will need to determine whether the offer is good or not. Okay, so after we explored the necessary APIs, the next step is to actually build out the solution. And for this solution, we're going to be using our own platform agency with a custom MCP server template, which you can find under classroom playbooks on our school community. So this template essentially allows you to build and deploy custom MCP servers super fast. You can check it out right here with this exclusive video. And additionally, it contains this GitHub repo, which will even allow you to create MCP servers for any use case without writing a single line of code. So let's hit use this template and then create a new repository. Okay, perfect. Now let's create a virtual environment. So common shift P, create virtual environment, VNF, Python, and then select the requirements file. Let's wait until it's created. And now we are ready to get going. So all we need to do with this template is literally just copy the documentation for this API and then send it to cursor. So as you can see, this documentation actually even has the ask AI button and it allows us to copy the markdown, which is perfect. So let's go back into cursor and then let's simply prompt cursor to create a tool that uses this API. So as you can see, Sonnet created a to-do list with six steps exactly as instructed. It's honestly so good at following the instructions. And now it proceeds to creating uh, the tool itself. So in the meantime, what we can do is we can grab the API key from Rentcast and then put it into the environment file. Okay, so here's the tool that it created. So let's now test this tool. And as you can see, we get a list of comparable properties. Amazing. So this tool works on the first attempt, which means that we are already almost there for creating this agent. So let's also remove the example tools from this repo. You can simply hit delete. And now let's create another tool, 
which will allow us to analyze the transcripts from the sales calls. So this tool must take the URL of the sales call, which will contain the audio file, and then it must simply transcribe it with Whisper. So let me simply prompt cursor again. It's always a good idea to include the relevant documentation in the prompt. Okay, so here's the second tool. As you can see, it also looks good. Seems like Sonnet also one shot at this one. And now let's actually test it out with a real audio from their CRM. So they previously gave me access to their CRM. Make sure you ask for all of the access permissions and make sure you specifically ask for owner or admin access because this is gonna save you a lot of time later. And here they have all of the opportunities on the board. And yeah, this is basically where they store all of the call recordings. Okay, so here is one recording of such a call. So let's try to get the URL. Okay, so it seems like this is a voicemail, but nevertheless, it should be enough for us to test. So as you can see, Cursor found that there is actually one error and that the API needs to be updated. And now it proceeds to actually doing that. Awesome, and now as you can see, tool finally works. All right, so now these tools are ready to deploy and to deploy them, we're gonna use Railway. So Railway is a very modern infrastructure platform that allows you to deploy any GitHub repos in just one click. So this cursor template is actually optimized for Railway. So literally all we need to do to deploy it is to simply push our changes to GitHub. So let's write a commit message and then let's simply commit and push. Okay, perfect. Now let's go back to Railway and now let's create a new project. So hit deploy from GitHub and then select the repo that you just created. So it should only take around a minute to deploy for the first time, and then every update is actually gonna be even shorter. In the meantime, we can go to settings and then set up a domain for our tools. So here under networking, just simply hit generate a domain, leave the 8080 port, and then this should create a URL for you, which you can use for the tools. Okay, so now let's copy our URL and let's go into agency. So on agency, make sure that you're using your client's account and not your own if you're building this for your client because this is gonna make modifications for them much easier. Later on, they're gonna be able to adjust prompts of their own agents so you don't have to worry about any small changes. And here under tools, select type MCP, hit continue. And here you need to enter your server URL. So on railway, the path of your tools is gonna to depend on the type of tools that you deployed. So this MCP is actually pretty cool because it allows you not only build custom tools and deploy them, but it also allows you to reuse tools from existing open source MCP servers. So you can read again more details on school or in this GitHub template. But basically what you can also do is you can also add any pre-built open source servers from MCP marketplaces into the mcp.json file, and then it will also automatically deploy them. So this is definitely the most convenient option if you already know some servers that execute exactly the function that you need. Do not build them yourself, just use the open source MCP servers and this will allow you to build your regions even faster. So you're gonna see your servers under the deploy logs. Here you can see we have local tools on the SSE path. And then if you had uh, more servers, you will have separate paths where there's a name of the server also followed by the SSE. So let's just copy the SSE path and then let's insert it with our URL on agency. Okay, and now as you can see, it loads two tools, first the property valuation tool, and second the audio transcription tool that we just created. By the way, you can also add authentication if you want. So for authentication, all you need to do is simply add the app token into the environment file, and then this is going to be used as your better token on agency. So let's create these two tools. I'm actually going to create them separately because they're going to be used for two different agents. Perfect, so now that we added these two tools, we are ready to start working on the agent. So let's create our first agent and let's name it real estate evaluator agent. And let's also add our property evaluation tool and also decrease the temperature. So this team actually has already tried creating a custom GPT for this exact purpose, but of course it wasn't as accurate because it only had web access and it also wasn't integrated into their process enough. However, they did send me the prompt for this combot v3 and this is a very good starting point for us. So I'm just gonna copy this prompt and then I'm gonna use it in that agent. One technique that I like to use for prompting is I like to ask the agent itself what's confusing in its own instructions. Today, agents understand themselves better than we do, and this is just gonna give you so many ideas where you can potentially improve the prompt. So as you can see, it raised a few points, and now let me just work on these instructions a little bit, and then we're gonna test it again. 
Okay, so I improved the prompt a little bit and now I think we're ready to test it. So this is the third step in the process. It's always a good idea to ask your client for some example data or retrieve it from the original source. So let's see if the agent uses the tool correctly. Okay, so as you can see, it sent all of the details to this tool input and then it drafted this email with the property valuation, price recommendations for various time periods and overall rating, which is six out of 10. So currently it seems like this deal is actually not that good. And so next I'm going to create the transcription agent, which is supposed to transcribe the calls and then generate meeting summaries from their CRM. So I'm going to use the AI prompts feature. Okay, so I'm going to use OpenAI FM to test this out. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to generate a dummy script for a wholesaling company. And then I'm just going to copy the script and paste it on OpenAI FM. Acquisition manager. Hi, this is Alex with Prime Property Solutions. Is this John? <laughs> okay, this might be a bit dramatic for a sales call, but I think this will work. So it's pasted in. Awesome. And now, as you can see, we get the details and a brief summary of the call. So yeah, this is, this is really cool, actually, that it worked so fast. Awesome. So now that both our agents are tested, we are ready for the next step, which is to actually integrate them into our client's systems. And the best way to integrate your agents into the client systems is to, of course, use the exact same systems that they're using today. And so for the forum, they're using Monday CRM. And for lead qualification, they're using REI Reply, which is, I think, based on Go High Level. So I know that Monday CRM has a workflows feature, but in my opinion, it's a bit limited. They only allow you to set like two actions. And also for webhooks, you need to like verify webhook signatures, which makes it a bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Zapier integration for the first agent, and I'm just going to put it into Zapier, and then I'm going to connect the Monday CRM trigger to that agent there. The difference between agents and automations is that agents should typically have a follow-up. So that's why here we have primarily integrations that allow you to chat with an agent, not just trigger an agent. And yeah, I'm sure that we're going to develop uh, these like more agentic applications for Steven in the future. But for now, let's just start with these simple AI workflows. So let's select our real estate evaluator agent. Let's add a description. And then let's install the agency app on Zapier. So soon we'll also add NA10 and of course we'll also add our own triggers in the future. But honestly, I prefer Zapier because they have a bit more integrations than NA10. So let me quickly set this up right now. Okay, so now let's select the agency app on Zapier. And now for the event, we need to select prompt. And for the agent, we need to connect our agency account. So we just need to get our agency API key in settings. So let me create one right now. Awesome, let's hit continue. Then let's select our integration. So let's select the real estate evaluator agent. And then in the fields, we basically need to map all of the details from the event and on monday.com and then add the appropriate descriptions. So let me also do this now. Let's retest the step. So this took a while, of course, because the agent used the tool. And now we get the response with all of the financial analysis, price recommendations, and overall investing rating. That's amazing. Okay, next we just have to save this output somewhere. So in the current process, they sent an email to Steven with all of this information, and then Steven simply confirms the offer. However, we also set up a Google Chat with them. So for now, I'm going to use Google Chat. And then after everything is working properly, we're going to send it via emails. So let's set up a new space for this agent. Okay, so now let's select our chat room and let's enter the details. Awesome, and now this is live. By the way, there is also a very cool way to test your agents in Zapier. So here you can hit test run and then you can select one of the original records from your customer's systems. And then once you selected the record, you can simply hit test run and this will run your entire Zap. So then you can directly compare the outputs of your agent with the inputs from your client systems. So now, as you can see, this zap has finished with a different record. And now I can see a completely different output from an agent. And again, this just allows me to iterate on my agent a bit faster. So next, what I would do is I would just go back to the agent's prompt. I would look on the input that went into this zap, and then I would compare it with the output and try to adjust the prompt so it's closer to the client's expectations. 
Okay, now let's actually create the second flow, which is gonna be in the REI reply CRM. So here I know in Go High Level, they have pretty robust automations. So I'm gonna try to do this directly in their CRM. And for this, we're gonna need an API integration. So the second agent we're gonna deploy via the API. Okay, so here you can see how to properly call uh, this agent. So it's pretty simple. Let's go back into Go High Level. And then here we need to select the trigger. So the trigger is gonna be the call status. Uh, and the filter for this trigger is gonna be that the call status is now completed. And the action is gonna be a custom webhook. So inside the custom webhook, we need to enter the URL of our agent and also all of these parameters, which we can just copy and paste right here. And also don't forget to insert your better token with your API key right here. And for the message, all we need to do is pass a custom value for the call recording URL. And the last step will be to just add a note to the same lead with the response from an agent. Okay, so I ran into an issue where I can't find the recording URLs and also it seems like they might be private so the agent can't access them. However, I found out that Go High Level already has a call transcription feature. So I'm just gonna use that instead. I'm just gonna go into the settings and I'm just gonna enable this feature. Okay, awesome. So now the call transcription is enabled. So we can just pass this call transcript inside the message for the agent. Okay, so here's the last call transcript custom value. So I guess this is exactly what we need. So now I think it should be working fine. It's a very simple workflow. You just get the call transcript, then you use the agent to analyze that call, and then you add it back into the node for the same lead. So it's not even an agent, to be honest. This is actually, this part of this process is a simple AI workflow, but as I always say, you don't have to focus on only agents. So if your client currently requires an AI workflow, if this is what they need the most right now, then build this for them and then transition to more sophisticated and general agents later. And so the last step is to evaluate so evaluations are crucial once you submit the MVP because you need to see what your agents are actually doing. And so on our platform, we have the observability already integrated with LinkFuse. By the way, make sure you check out the episode with Adam Silverman on observability. Honestly, I have no idea how this podcast got so few views because I honestly thought that this was one of the most valuable podcasts that I've personally ever recorded. In this episode, Adam shows how simple it is actually to set up observability. It only takes like two minutes of your time and he also shows all of the benefits that come from that, which there are so many of. So definitely check it out. We share all of the insights that you need to know about this topic. So in the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate how these agents are performing and then we're going to adjust them together. And then I'm going to show you how to actually remove human in the loop once the agent is performing as expected. And then in future videos, we'll even set up more complex, more general agents, like for example, the voice agents to automate this part right here. So yeah, as I said, the goal for this series is to completely automate Steven's business. I think it's going to take me probably a few more videos, but it's actually quite possible even right now. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode.